Ogambu Sawaba was 13 years old when she was married off to a retired soldier, as it was endemic in northern Nigeria where women are least supported and their education ignored. Sawaba struggled through all these challenges to emerge as a healthy, creative, and independent political activist who helped to educate many people. Sawaba also emerged from colonial persecution and deformity, renewed and very humane, and like most of her contemporaries, sowed seeds for the continued liberation of African women from the African culture and institutions of the African nation states. Her political actions during the period gained her persecution from both the colonial authorities and the native governments and several times resulted in her being imprisoned. Sawaba was one of the early leaders of the Northern Element Progressive Union, Nipu, in Zaria, a movement that became the key support base with the working class and the poor. In this video, we shall take a look at the life and times of Gambo Sawaba, how she was married at the age of 13, became a politician at 17, and at the age of 20 had suffered many incidents of beating, abuse, and imprisonment. Jaratu Gambo Sawaba was born to the family of Fatima and Theophilus Wilcox Amateifu, who later converted to Islam and took the name of Isa. Her father was of Ghanaian descent, while her mother came from Lupe land. Sawaba was born on February 15, 1933, and was originally named Hajaratu, but later came to be known as Gambo. Her last name was allegedly given to her by Malam Gambo Sawaba, a prominent Nepal member in Zaria who was twice elected to the Zaria City Council. As a young girl, Gambo Sawaba struggled and developed a stubborn streak while showing affection for her bullied peers and mentally challenged individuals. She was educated at the Native Authority Primary School in Todunwada. However, a few years later, beginning in 1943, she lost her father, and then three years later in 1946, her mother died, which subsequently ended her education. Gambo Sawaba was married four times in her lifetime. The first time she had been married to Abubakar Karba Belu, where she was 13 years old. Belu was a veteran of the Second World War, but he disappeared after the time of Sawaba's first pregnancy and childbirth. Both Abubakar and Sawaba had a girl child, Pelikisu. Her next marriage was with Amidu Guso, and her marriage was tempestuous as the couple often engaged in battling each other. She went through two more marriages later. Gambo Sawaba entered politics when she was just 17 years old. At that time, Northern Nigeria was controlled by the Northern People's Congress NPC, backed by the Emirs and the British Colonial Authority, but Sawaba joined the opposition party. She became the women's leader in Kaduna, the Sabungiri district, and the party's mission was to take power away from the rich and bring the poor together. In 1950, she left Zaria for Abiyokuta to meet with Fumilai Ransom Kuti. After reading about her campaign in Egba land, in her struggle for women's rights in tax matters and the brief abdication and exile of Baba Samuel Ladakbo Ademola II as a result, Sawaba stayed in Abekuta for three months. On her return to Zaria, Gambo Sawaba made a name for herself when she ascended the podium at a political lecture and spoke out in a room full of men. There, she was given the name Sawabia, meaning Redeemer. But later shortened to the masculine Sawaba. Gambo Sawaba lobbied against underaged marriages and forced labor. She also promoted Western education in the North and met with women who were not permitted to engage in political activities because of their gender. As a result, Gambo was arrested along with 200 other women for not receiving a permit before the assembly. They were each sentenced to one month imprisonment. In the meantime, Gambo was said to have been sent to prison 16 times in her lifetime and she was often dehumanized by the police. Throughout the First Republic, she continued her political activities, often enduring humiliating retribution from the violent opposition thugs. She advocated the rights of women to vote and was elected chief of the women's wing of the Nepal. During the Second Republic, Gambo Sawaba was a member of the Great Nigeria People's Party GNPP and served as its deputy national chairman. She worked as a contractor in the 1970s before becoming involved in small-scale trading. She was a philanthropist who focused her energies in her latter years in providing support for homeless children 
and the elderly. Around 5 a.m. on Sunday, October 14, 2001, Ajia Hajaratu Gambo Sawaba died at the Amadu Bele University Teaching Hospital Zaria after a prolonged illness. Survived by her daughter, Belikisu, she was 68. Of a truth, Gambo Sawaba was an Amazon and an enigma in the 20th century northern Nigeria. Right from the start, the major aspects of her character emerged very boldly. To Sawaba, oppression is unbearably revolting. Hence, she stoutly defended the rights of the weak. She did not brook undeserved wealth and even reportedly shared every couple of hers with the poor. Deeply nationalistic, Gambo Sawaba abhorred ethnic discoloration, regionalism, or any sort of discrimination on the basis of primeval factors. She was always modest and unpretentious, but proud of having suffered the adverse repercussions of upholding the rights of the oppressed. In 2012, the federal government of Nigeria honored her by featuring her portrait on the field 5000 Naira notes, which also featured Fumila Ransom Kuti and Margaret Ekbo. Also, the Gambo Sahaba General Hospital in Zaria is named after her. <laughs>